Daniel Keplinger, King Gimp, Public and Private Conversations. 20 years ago, the Oscar award-winning documentary King Gimp about inclusion of children with disabilities leapt Towson University alumnus and artist Dan Keplinger into the spotlight. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. Towson University presents an exhibition of Dan Keplinger's work at Towson Town Center. Daniel Keplinger, King Gimp, Public and Private Conversations. As a person with a disability, I do not rely on technology for personal communication. Instead, my art is my voice. I know my thoughts might be hidden by millions of words. That is why my art is not for decoration, but to start conversations. It might be a contradiction that I have a heavy presence on social media. I do not know what I ever did without text, but when it comes to one-on-one -on -one communication, I've always resisted using ACC devices. Technology is meant to enhance our lives, not be a substitute for human touch. For example, the mythological third arm that people always spoke of for an eternity, now this has become a reality with the use of voice control. Does it have the same connotation as walking or rolling across the room to turn the light on for someone? As art and technology merge, how do I keep my voice from disappearing? That is what I was mostly concerned about as I turned to digital media. My mark making and my artwork is my language. It lets the viewer see my thoughts without having an interpreter between us, whether human or electronic. No matter whether I communicate my voice or art, there is an intimacy that creates an unexplainable bond with me. I might talk with thousands of brushstrokes and words, but it only takes one to feel my passion. Daniel Keplinger, King Gimp, Public and Private Conversations. Closest, 1999. Oil on canvas, 32 by 26 inches. Dan, this is a painting of my other friend Vivian that I met at Camp Greentop, and she went to my high school prom with me. We were dancing together in the King Gimp documentary. Description. Vivian's head, neck, and top of her shoulders show in this image. She has red hair, very similar to the red-orange of the background. Her top is blue and is a mock turtle style. Painting in an expressionist style, the artist employs intense colors and dramatic brushstrokes. Vivian's face is a light yellow ochre color with applied rosy cheeks. Her lips are wide, and her eyes, eyebrows, and nose are delineated with gray painted lines. Past, 2000. Oil on canvas, 23 by 32 inches. Dan. I often get asked about what if there was a cure or magic pill to get rid of CP. Would you take it? Of course I always say no. CP is part of my personality. It is the only way of life I know. Although I do believe that when I do go to the other world, it will be my ultimate escape. Description. This painting has a green swath across the bottom that represents the ground. The rest of the painting is taken up with a largely orange sky. The sky shifts to white and blue in the upper right, suggesting a cloud in heaven. An empty wheelchair and an oversized helmet rest on the grass. The chair to the left and the helmet to the right. Gates float over the white cloud and blue sky. Be thankful. Obey me. 2002. Etching on paper. 9.5 by 10.5 inches. Dan. Everyone sees electric chairs as a tool of freedom. But when you get one, it morphs into your body. Everything is good as long as you treat it well and keep it charged or stay in places that are accessible. When your chair needs a charge or it's broken, it is like someone cutting off your feet and stripping away your independence. Description. This small black and white work is a depiction of Dan's wheelchair from the front. One of the wheels is covered by fabric while the other on the left is visible. The title of the work, Be Thankful, Obey Me, appears as old typeface floating around three quarters of the way up the image. The white tonalities are warm and the background is soft, showing white marks from the etching process. Ya, yeah, 2003. Mixed Media on Canvas, 44 by 22 inches. Dan, when I use people as my subject, I'd rather take video so I can capture their natural expressions. I feel when you ask people to take pictures of themselves, their real emotions are locked away. Description, this is a narrow vertical composition with one male figure to the right and the arm of another figure to the left. Part of a chandelier is at the top. Both figures hold drinks. The person on the right takes up about half of the entire space and appears to be smiling with his empty hand raised and closed to the picture plane. The viewer is below, looking up toward the smiling male, who with his raised arm acknowledges that his picture is being taken. Ears up, 
2003. Mixed media on canvas. 22 by 44 inches. Dan. Most people would think a voice is the only thing needed for communication, but really it takes the whole body for a complete story to be told. Sometimes the body can say more than words. Emotions can even contradict what is being said. There are times when my family and friends can tell what I'm thinking before I can speak. This really is not fair when I do not want people to know my real feelings. The only way I can hide my true feelings is by phone conversation. Everyone has trouble talking to me by phone. They say it is because they cannot see my lips. I think it is more than that. When we interact in person, my whole body is telling the story. Description. This horizontal composition depicts three figures, two men and one woman. The woman is a brown color with black hair, while the two men are green with black hair. The male, the artist, on the far right has a beard and holds a brown bottle of beer. The background is more delicately described with pale, somewhat transparent green, blue, brown, gray, and teal vertical brushstrokes. 500 quadrillionth time, 2004. Mixed media on canvas, 45.5 by 25.5 inches. Dan. I do enjoy sitting outside when the weather is nice, but it does come with a risk since the noise level fluctuates. This is not good for someone with CP, since we can be startled when we are focused or enjoying an adult beverage. Then you add the fact that outdoor tables are not the same quality as regular seating. Now, here is the quandary. What is more important to say first, the food or drinks? This is where the artist's instincts flare up. Somehow the whole table can flip over and the cups end up in my friend's hands. This skill proved quite handy during a trip through Europe with all its outdoor cafes. Description. A vertical composition in the out of doors. A gray patio space is the first vertical band at the bottom. Next is a wider area of grass. Above that section is the sky, which begins with a purple color and then transitions into blue with white fluffy clouds. At the top is a pale yellow sun. In the picture plane, in front of this pastoral scene is a flying black table, two red drink containers, and to the left, two empty green arms. My Gateway, 2004. Oil on canvas, 22 by 45 inches. Dan. This is another portrait of symbols that represent me and a still life of my desk. When I am without my computer or my head stick, I am cut off from the outside world. Description. This is a horizontal composition with three predominant colors, red, green, and gold. The bottom third of the paintings is largely red tones, which include the desk, a lamp, and a plant pot. Another lamp, drink with straw, and plants are in shades of gold. The background is in shades of green, blue-green, and teal. The four objects, two lamps, drink, and potted plants move across the surface from left to right. The Dan Turbulence 1, 2004, Mixed Media on Canvas, 45.5 by 45 inches. Dan, maybe the best simulation for cerebral palsy would be air turbulence when flying through a storm. At one time or another, most of us have flown and might have had a bumpy ride. Some think by holding their drink it will not spill. One should realize your whole body is still moving. There is nothing that can be done to keep nature from taking its course. I am sure this drives all control freaks crazy. When you are a person with a disability, control is just out of reach. There's always someone that thinks they know better than you. Even though each of us is unique, the best we can do is be our own self-advocates and not let anyone drown out our voices. Mother Nature is not the only one who can throw a system into chaos. Description. This is a square work that is made up of abstract forms in brown, blue, green, and red. These shapes form the elements of a wheelchair, an arm, and a cup. Everything seems to float. We recognize a blue sky and a brown earth, a green arm-like form, and the black and blue elements of the wheelchair. Just Another Night Out, 2005. Mixed media on canvas, 35 by 40 inches. Dan. What would seem to be an ordinary night out for me, wifey, and friends might not be that way to others. This is especially true when we go to new places and need to do recon. My two concerns are the bathrooms and how tight the seating is. I like to know how easy it is to get to the bathrooms and how clean they are before I start to order, so I can take into consideration the bladder factor of what I drink. The other thing to consider is how close the tables are to each other and how far I need to sit under the table. The tighter the seating is, the more chance there is for our table to experience a CP earthquake. This could be caused by a sudden noise or someone bumping into my chair. Description. 
This brightly colored image is comprised of Kelly green, olive green, red orange, royal blue, teal, and two strips across the top where a thinner layer of red covers a thinner layer of blue. The main part of the composition depicts a tipping blue table with three glasses, one a teal green, one yellow, and the other transparent with a royal blue outline. A brown bottle also sits on the table. Over in the far right, we see a green and rust red stripped arm holding a glass. There are four red vertical stripes that are designed on the dividing wall. Legs, 2005, mixed medium on canvas, 48 by 60 inches. Dan, most people think if you have legs, you have the freedom to go anywhere. Now that I think about it, I refer to my wheelchair as my legs, and I only talk about the parts of my lower limbs. There will always be limits to where my real and metaphorical legs can take me. That is why I consider my knees to be more important. I have crawled places that I should not have gone, and without my knees I could not do my art. There have been times when my knees were so hurt that I needed doctor notes to sit out my art classes. Description This horizontal painting has a brown section on the bottom about three-fourths of the way across then blue across the middle at an angle toward the left with an orange and yellow sun in the upper right corner. In front of the earth and sky, various forms float, including a blue-gray and red-orange wheel on the far left, and closer to the picture plane, tubular forms in red, orange, and gray. These represent parts of the wheelchair. There is a dark green staircase that climbs from the earth to the sun, and a small set of steps leads downward. Nurture, 2008. Photolithograph on paper. 10 by 8 inches. Dan. Everyone may see my wheelchair as taking care of me, but it goes both ways. If I do not take care of it, or if I abuse my wheelchair, it would not be around for long. It works as any other relationship. You are rewarded with what you put into it. Description. This is a print made up of black, white, and grays. It shows a head and hand and upper torso. A miniature wheelchair sits upon the hand. A form as the lower right is part of a headrest. Good and Evil, 2008. Photolithograph on paper, 8 by 10 inches. Dan. I was thinking about the old cartoon when a character needs to decide, do they listen to their good or bad self? Sometimes it can be the same for my inner wheelchair. There are some situations I could use to my advantage, but it's not always ethical. Then there are times when the wheelchair is saying, don't go down that trail, and you pay for not listening to it. Description. This is a self-portrait in black and white with some gray tonalities. Dan's head is positioned in the upper half of the composition, a bit to the left of middle. It is a very dark image with lots of rich blacks. Lower down and to the right, a small wheelchair almost seems to climb the figure's body. No. 2008. Photolithograph on paper, 8 by 10 inches. Dan. This is my worst nightmare. My wheelchair with an ACC device. It totally takes over and my personality goes unseen and I am powerless. Description. This is a monochromatic print. The bulk of the composition is in gray tonalities that are soft and wash-like. The wheelchair is depicted on the left in a graphic style of black and dark gray, seemingly out of control. A small dark figure in the upper right is seated at the end of what appears to be a white diving board. He balances precautiously, arms outstretched, ready to fall off it. My Precious, 2008. Photolithograph on paper, 8 by 8 inches. Everyone has to love Golem and how he freaks out when he cannot find his ring. How can an everyday item such as a ring or a wheelchair have so much power over a person? It just shows how one does not realize how dependent they are on something until it is gone. In our minds, we are bigger and stronger than we see its value. Description: This black and white print depicts the artist from the shoulders up in profile. His right hand is raised to his face and a small wheelchair balanced on the top of his hand. Beastly. 2014. Screen print on paper, 11 by 14 inches. Dan. This eye is all-powerful, but it also has a dark side that people do not talk about. When a hunter is on the trail of its prey, you can tell how focused they are and will not give up the pursuit for anything. There are many things that people can pursue. Nourishment, lovers, or just a goal in life. I am familiar with all three of these, but I am best known for the third one since all my life I've been told I cannot do something. That is when I go into beast mode and get locked on the goal and do anything to prove I can achieve it. A beast lives in us all, but the challenges it harnesses is for productivity. Description. The print is of a single eye. The visible face is in blue and yellow and green. 
The eye is made up of black and a dark red, and the eyebrow is in black. The eye is positioned halfway up the horizontal composition and a little to the right of center. The Window, 2014. Screen print on paper, 14 by 11 inches. Dan. Everyone knows that the eye is the window to the soul, but it works both ways. People are comfortable when they feel as if they are in control or they think they are educated about the situation. But when the script is flipped, that is when fear sets in. At one time or another, we have all been in the attic with the window at the end of the room. Out of our peripheral vision, we see something flash by the window. Most likely it's a bug or another winged animal. It's the sheer fact of the unknown that creates the fear of being watched. I have this similar experience when I spend too long at one place in public by myself. People start wondering why I'm sitting there, even if I'm playing on my tablet. I can see people starting to get concerned, but they don't know how to communicate with me. Fear is based on the unknown, and that can be from having an obstructed view of perception by not being willing to investigate. Description. This print is a close-up of the left artist's right eye. The face is yellow. There is a shadow of the nose on the right. The eye is described by red and black lines and the same gray-blue shadows that define the side of the nose. The Real Fear, 2017, Digital Media. Not going to jail, but going back to nursing homes and worse. If there will be Medicaid cuts, it will send thousands of PWDs back to live in nursing homes and institutions. This will take away all of our rights and make us treated worse than inmates. Description. This image depicts an angry female face with mouth open and a scream. She is flesh-colored in shades of tan and peach and she looks over to her left. A small black and white image above and behind her right eye is part of a police uniform and in the lower left is a gloved hand. Bondage of Liberty, 2018. Digital Media. Dan. Physical bondage is nothing compared to mental bonds. Those are the real disabilities that can kill anyone's soul. The fight to save the ADA and Medicaid may be for physical access, but I view it as the principle of knowing that we are seen as equals in society. When you tell adults where they can live or limit the places where they can go, is that the America we want to live in? Description. This is an image of a woman wearing a yellow blouse who is screaming in anguish. Blue plastic cuffs encircle her wrists, and to her right, we see part of a police uniform and a hand grabbing her wheelchair. Awareness versus Activist, 2020, Digital Media, 14 by 10.5 inches. Dan. For me, My Left Foot from 1989 was the first film that had grit when it came to telling Christy Brown's story. I would put it in the same category as the film Water Dance from 1992. I would say these were not activist films since they did not paint a polished picture of life as a person with a disability, nor were they a call to action. When these two films came out, it was the early 90s, so we were still trying to raise awareness of our cause. The ADA Act was just signed in 1990, so our work was just starting. People could see me connect with the film because we were both artists with CP, but it also explored the ideas that we wanted in education, love, and did not have the perfect family life. These were subjects that might have been foreign to a lot of people and might have given them new insight into life with a disability. I think films like these are not meant to call people into action, but to increase awareness. The goal is to create a society that is fair and accessible for all. This does not happen overnight, although that would be idyllic. The more awareness that is brought to a cause, action will have more urgency on a greater scale. Description. This is a portrait of Christy Brown. His face fills the composition. His skin is green with speckles and lines of darker green and black. His beard and hair are black and brown gray. The eyes are a bright blue. His mouth is open in a smile. The background, which makes up only a small part of the composition, is orange, red, and yellow. The exhibition is curated by J. Susan Isaacs, Professor of Art History and Gallery Curator. Public and Private Conversations is supported by BTU Partnerships for a Greater Baltimore, the Kaplan Fund, the TU Office of Inclusion and Institutional Equity and Wise Markets.